Amazon, AWS, uh, brought a multitude of generative AI updates. Dan, what, what is, uh, what's going on here? Well, for more information on that, please follow Patrick Moorhead on, on x.com because he probably put out one of the better tweets. It, it got exactly two likes. Uh, it got like 40. What are you talking about? I don't know. I clicked on the one that you shared. It shows two. I don't know. Am uh, I wrong? Anyway, uh, it's, it's not about the, it's not all about the likes, you know? I don't know. My, my children told me it is. So sometimes when I post stuff, they're like, you have a, you're, you're, you're verified, but only like five people like your tweets. It's not very nice. My kids are kind of mean, but you know, I, I can say that here because I know they'll never listen to my podcast. Yeah. You know, uh, by the way, they won't read my books either. You know, you think the one person you could count on to read your books would be. All right. So, so disappointing. Um, so in the G Gen AI world, you know, we are going to talk quite a bit about uh, GA this week and another uh, Bedrock, which is the managed service for the various foundational and large language models offered by AWS. And Pat, you know what I said in my tweet? Amazon is further democratizing the ability for enterprises and users to be able to implement and scale their artificial intelligence and generative AI ambitions through making and democratizing these foundational models and large language models. So if you're already running your data and running your, your, uh, your compute in AWS, it's a shortcut to being able to simplify and implement your uh, Gen AI ambitions. So you saw that they have their Titan, which is a bunch of search and personalization engines that are going to be made GA as well. They've now decided to quickly uh, adapt Llama 2. Um, and then they've got a few other things that they came out with. Probably the most important thing, Pat, that I noticed in this week's announcement is they're starting to want to communicate that, hey, we have big companies, big customers that are committed to and leveraging AWS and Bedrock to lever uh, to take uh, their J G Gen AI strategies to market. So they put this in here, and Pat, that's why I said I loved your tweet, because it was a nice uh, consolidation of these thoughts for me. But big companies like BMW, big companies like LexisNexis, Rocket Mortgage, PGA Tour, and many others are basically saying they've already committed to building generative AI on top of AWS Bedrock, Amazon Bedrock. Is it AWS Bedrock or Amazon Bedrock? I don't know. I always get confused there. I think okay. they conf Amazon confuses folks. With okay. That. Well, the fact is, is what, what, whichever one it is, this is being built on top of Bedrock. And I think what the company is doing right now is, is really twofold. One, they are really leaning into, we are the open, you know, it's kind of interesting, Pat, because AWS for a long time, kind of being the no hybrid, no multi company, uh, has kind of 180 this whole Gen AI thing. So, look, we're not going to try to build it uh, in terms of ground up, doing all the big large language model and then kind of centralize it. We're going to use all Anthropic and Cohere and we're going to use Llama and we'll, whatever it is, you can use it here. Um, and they've kind of created that very open approach, which I think in Gen AI is good, as I, I do believe some of these bigger large language models that were initially moats aren't really going to be moats long term. The foundational models, the smaller models, the industry specific models, that's where it's going to be at. We're seeing it somewhat here. We've heard it from SAP. We're hearing it from Oracle. We're seeing it from other companies. Good progress from Amazon, AWS uh, in terms of Gen AI offerings. All right. I'm glad you took all my content off my no, your tweet kidding. was so good. I mean, look, as long as I give you a pat on the back, I get to steal all your ideas. You do. And sometimes <laughs> I'll steal your ideas and not give you any credit. So I appreciate you giving me the credit there. I know, so. dude. I know. So listen, um, I'm going to hit this maybe maybe uh, from a tangential angle, which was the meme out there was that AWS was way behind in, in generative AI. And that was you know, issued by people that I respect um, uh, out there. And, you know, so I really kind of put my nose to the grindstone to say, you know, what what, what does late mean? Uh, they were the last one to announce. Uh, they were the last big one to go uh, GA. But then again, they also have the largest enterprise AI estate out there of, of anybody. So, 
I've also said, and we said this even right after the first Microsoft launch, that this is a, a marathon and not a sprint. If you're not too far behind to go GA and getting customers on this, but uh, AWS came out with all guns a blaring and they listed out 21 customers. And these are not just, you know, web folks uh, who do nothing but share content, right? You have financial uh, folks out there, legal folks out there, right? You've got Intuit, you have LexisNexis, uh, NatWest, you have pharmaceutical companies like Merck, uh, Rocket Mortgage. Um, so, you know, these are not just a bunch of folks who are going to kind of jump off and take these massive risks uh, without having, you know, payback. So I think that counts for something. One thing that I didn't hear is, you know, Titan embeddings is something that there, there was no description on where, what are the data sources? And not only do I not know the data sources, uh, Amazon is not at least publicly indemnifying people if there's something in there that could be, um, uh, could have a copyright on it or or not be owned uh, not be owned by by Amazon. So to be interesting as we as we jump into the IBM uh, one and you uh, cover that, I think it'll talk about more of 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 the why. But folks, AWS is very much going to be an IaaS and a PaaS play with generative AI. Don't convince yourself uh, that they're that they're not. Um, yeah. They're the largest purveyor of ML services for IaaS. I don't, I've never measured that on PaaS, but it's just a, it's just a fact. And I, I, while generative AI technologically is very different from machine learning and deep learning and analytics, um, the type of things you're trying to get out of it are, are very similar. Generative AI just does it better and, and more accurately. One final editorial here. I wish they didn't have separate names for generative AI, uh, Bedrock versus SageMaker. Uh, I know that technologically SageMaker is a, mach a machine learning, basically a complete IDE end-to-end uh, -end, uh, process flow, but I think AWS uh, uh, will confuse people by having those things uh, as separate. Uh, out of the other side of my mouth, I'll say that, you know, uh, Bedrock is an AI service, uh, not an ML service uh, as, as defined. So yeah, maybe it deserved, maybe it deserved a different name. I, I just think it's confusing.